Hey there, in this tutorial, we'll be learning about Delta Timing. So let me explain what Delta Timing is. Let's say your game runs at 30 frames per second and each frame, the player moves 1 pixel to the right. So in 1 second, the player moves 30 pixels to the right. Now let's say the game slows down because of performance issues and runs at 10 FPS. In that case, the game only gets 10 frames per second, so in a second, the player moves 10 pixels to the right instead of 30. So that's considerably slower than what you want. This is where delta timing comes in. Using delta timing, the speed is multiplied by a certain value so that the player moves 30 pixels to the right no matter what the FPS is. So let's get to it. In this project, I have an empty manager object and a player object. It has the move speed in the create event and the movement code in the step event. It simply gets the horizontal and vertical input, multiplies them with the move speed, sets them to HSP and VSP and then adds them to X and Y. And this is how fast the player should move. Now I'll open O Manager and add the create event. Here I'll add this. This will set the game speed to 10 FPS so we'll use this to test our delta timing. So I'll run the game and you can see that the player moves a lot slower. So I'll go back to the create event and comment this line for now. Then I'll add this. The global delta factor variable will hold the value that will be multiplied with the speeds. So I'm initializing it at 1. Here I'm creating a macro called delta for global delta factor. So basically you'll be able to use the variable global delta factor by only typing delta. So you won't have to type the longer name each time you want to use it. Now I'll add the begin step event and add this here. Delta time is a variable that tells you the time that has passed between the previous frame and the current frame. So if the game is slower, this value is larger and vice versa. This value is in microseconds so it has to be divided by a million to convert it into seconds. And since our game has 30 frames in 1 second, I'll multiply this value with 30 to get a normalized value. But if your game runs at 60 FPS, you can set this to 60. So if the performance is fine, this value should be around 1. This function will print the delta value in the console. So I'll run the game and you can see in the console that the delta time stays around 1. Now I'll go to the create event and enable this line for a low frame rate. I'll go to O player step event, I'll multiply the delta value with the movement speeds. Now I'll run the game, which is running at 10 FPS, and if I move around, you can see that the player is moving at the regular speed. The speeds are being multiplied by 3, so at 10 FPS, it functions like 30 FPS. Now I'll go to O manager's begin step event and command this debug line. Now we also need to add delta timing to alarms. After an alarm is set, its value is reduced by 1 each step until it reaches 0 when the alarm is executed. So if the FPS are low, alarms will take longer to run. To fix this, we'll create our own alarm system. So I'll open the create event and add this here. When an alarm is inactive, its value is minus 1. But using that value can cause some problems with our custom alarms, so we'll use a lower value, minus 100. Using this for loop, I'll create 12 alarms in this array, all set to the inactive value. Now in the begin step event, I'll add this. This loop will go through each alarm in the array. If the alarm value is greater than 0, the delta value will be subtracted from it. So the alarm will count down based on the delta speed. If the alarm is at or below 0 and it's above the inactive value, the alarm value will be set to inactive and the alarm event will be run. So for each alarm, it will count down if it's greater than 0 and when it reaches 0, the alarm will run. Now for testing this alarm system, I'll open the create event and add this here. Here I'm setting alarm 0 to 30 which is 1 second and creating a variable for counting those seconds. I'm using the built-in alarms here and not my alarms which use a capital A. Now I'll add the alarm 0 event and add this here. This will print the second value to the console, increase it by 1 and then set alarm 0 to 30 again. And now I'll run the game. You can see the seconds appearing in the console but they're appearing too slow because the game is running at 10 FPS. Now I'll change the lowercase a to an uppercase a so that it uses my alarm system and then run the game. You can see now that they're appearing at the correct time because of delta timing. 
So using delta timing, you can make sure that everything moves at the correct speed, at every frame rate, and that every alarm runs on time. So that's all for this tutorial, I really hope this helped you. Check out this preview for my upcoming Udemy course and more tutorials on my channel. Make sure you subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.